You want to use that shiny new DualSense controller on your Xbox Series X? How about a custom third-party controller on a retro console like an NES? What are you, some kind of sick psychopath? What kind of world do you think we live in? One where a company called Brook Accessories exists. Specifically adapters that allow you to go cross-platform with controllers. So PlayStation controllers on Xbox, Xbox controllers on a Nintendo Switch, pretty much hundreds of third and first-party gamepads usable on any platform you want. It's a sweet, sweet world. This is your controller, Captain. We've reached 6,900 feet. Go ahead and start flicking the sticks and mollywhopping the back paddles. Mm, you don't like back paddles? How about those rear buttons? We've tested almost 100 custom and premium controllers, and we're only at the beginning. You need a thumbstick guide or a tutorial on how to overclock your controller? Check out the controller playlist. Bing bong. Controller Captain out. A quick disclaimer for my audience, the Stallions and Stallionettes, these adapters were sent for review, but this is going to be an honest, comprehensive review. I haven't been paid or told to say anything about them, so if there's any cons, shortcomings, or areas of improvement, you're going to hear about it. So these companies make better products over time. And some solid upgrades have been made for compatibility. It says 125 plus. You're being modest again, Brooke. I keep telling you that. And I do say that because I've tested a ton of third-party custom premium and pro controllers that were not on their compatibility list from AIM, Scuff, Battle Beaver, Hex, Mega Mod, Cinch, Hyper, just to name a couple off Jump Street, and they all worked. This has features like turbo function and button remapping, which are niceties, features that I personally don't use, and I know a good portion of gamers don't, but it's great that this adapter does have those. Two phrases that I love to see. Plug and play, so ease of use, just simple compatibility, and then also latency over here. Lag City USA Population U? No, it, not when you're using this adapter. A lot of my audience watches my tutorials where we're overclocking controllers trying to get the lowest input lag or delay possible. If you're using an adapter that introduces more input lag or delay, it's just counterintuitive. So as this is the successor to the original XE, a couple of changes have been made. First of all, cause Cosmetically, I do believe that was pink, and I pointed out that cosmetically I thought that was weird considering PlayStation's theme color is blue. All of other Brooks adapters are color-coded, red for Nintendo, lime green for Microsoft. Let's just keep that going, and guess what? Uh, this version is blue. Not taking credit for that whole change, I'm sure they heard that from other sources too, but it was me. That this It's because of me. But as new controllers are coming out, for example, the DualSense Edge is a perfect example of this. That controller uses a different PCB, a whole different printed circuit board than a regular DualSense controller, but as new hardware is coming out, new controllers for these platforms, these consoles, there's only so much that Brooke can do with their existing adapters through patches and updates, which they're very good about rolling those out. For example, the DualSense Edge did not work with the XE2 when it initially dropped, and then with a recent update, it now does have full compatibility wirelessly. But as Sony and Microsoft release updates for their consoles, it does block a lot of compatibility, and as Brooke catches up by releasing new adapters, Brooke and other adapter companies, I'm sure, it allows you to continue going cross-platform, which is pretty sweet. Not to mention of all the adapters like this that I have tested, Brooke has the lowest input lag or delay, virtually none that I can notice on any of the consoles that I played on, and they just most importantly freaking work as you want them to, where you turn on your console, which you do have to do manually, you cannot wake up a console with a controller that isn't its native controller. You can put her to sleep, put her to beddy by, but you cannot wake it back up without the console being powered up, because obviously the adapter ain't getting juiced to her. But the biggest pain in the butt with these adapters is simply just plugging them to your PC to do the initial update to keep them up to date with the latest patch or update because you do need a computer to do that. There is no way to do that through console and you most likely have a home computer, but if you don't, you got to go to a buddy's house or the library, I guess. They don't like it probably if you're plugging mystery devices into their public access computer, but you get my point. You're going to have to get a computer, but after the update, these are very plug and play, very simple. You plug the male end of the adapter into the suck hole of your console, one of the USB ports, then the female USB port on the adapter, you're going to plug in a USB-C cable to your controller and it's instantly going to start working. Then press the PlayStation or Xbox button, you know, the home button on that sucker to wake it up and it's wirelessly connected to your console. I probably just made that sound way more complicated than it is. You start tethered or wired, unplug it, and this is only initially to just make the initial binding, if you will. After that, that controller's paired with that console. So I've got Xbox controllers paired up to my PS5. PS5 DualSense is connected to my Xbox series. With this converter, you're getting a lot of compatibility as this does support PS4 Switch and PC, and you don't see PS5 on here, but you can play PS4 games on your PS5 using a controller that's not meant for it. However, as of current, you can only use DualSense controllers or licensed Sony third-party controllers like the Razer Wolverine V2 Pro and the Victrix BFG. It's pretty insane. A lot of time you can actually daisy chain or link up a wireless adapter to this wireless adapter or converter, if you will, and uh, it looks like a big old long stick of gum sticking ass thing sticking off the front of your controller. It gets the job done.
done. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to play some Fallout 4 on Game Pass using a PS5 exclusive controller. And as for a warranty, all Brook products are covered by a one-year warranty, which is pretty standard here in North America. Not great. I just use the word standard. Now, as far as getting the latest update or patch and installing it, it's actually pretty simple. You have to jump from here over to here. I guess it's not the most simple thing, but to simplify it, I am going to have this linked in the description below. And the latest adapter under the PS4 section is going to be the, the Wingman XE2. That's what we're diddly dealing with here today. And you can download this PDF document, which is a manual specifically for the update process. A couple notes here. Again, has to be on PC, not a console. It also says you might need to disable your antivirus program or run as an administrator. I haven't needed to do either of these steps and I have updated many a Brook adapter in my day, but I'd rather disable my antivirus than have the stallions and stallionettes do it. I'd rather risk my biscuits getting slathered with virus gravy. The actual latest version of the download, this is version 1.14, which came out. It just gives you the month. So this month, never mind. you click this little drop down in the description and it gives you sure enough a more detailed description here's the actual date march 13th so this update came out four days ago nice improved connection stability controller compatibility update ps5 dualsense edge we're making this video pretty quickly after the dualsense edge got compatibility it's almost like brooke tipped me off and said hey does your community want to know that the dualsense edge can be used on other platforms i said they do they they i know them they're disgusting they would like to get filthy on other consoles and and the, the sickness is constrained to only one stable. They want to break out cross-platform and let us do that. Support Marco function. I think that might be a typo. Maybe macro would be a thing that Brooke is interested in. Nope, because they say Marco down here as well, too. If you're on PC, click right here. If you're on Macintosh, click here or click off the video. It's going to be a zip file. Go ahead and right click it. Extract all. It'll make a little unzipped folder over here, in which case you can delete the zip bad boy and going through a couple of subfolders. You have the actual .exe, which is the pro program the, the install. Oh, geez. Time to put my money where my mouth is. I said I was going to do it and I'm going to do it. More info. Brooke, unknown publisher. This is scary. Run it anyway. Cool. So I just rebuilt a new PC and we're back up and running. I'm just kidding. It did nothing to my computer. Totally fine as I thought it would be. So the first step, it says to hold down both of these buttons, these clear buttons on each side as you plug it into one of the USB ports. It doesn't have to be this aggressive, but as you plug it into your computer, also, it doesn't matter if it's a USB 2.0 or 3.0 port. It'll diddle you the same. Wait a moment. Firmware is downloading. Go, well, God, I should hope so. That's the whole point of this tutorial. Cool. So it's asking me to do all this stuff over here. Hold the button. Nope. I'm not doing any of that. I'm just going to press start. It's already plugged into the front of my tower. Oh, that's cool. It's a little gecko or chameleon, whatever the Brook logo is, whatever this creature is. Green check mark in my book means good. Generally, a big red X means it did not complete successfully, but this is what we like to see. And it also confirms that down here with some text. And in case you're ever wondering why you would use one of these adapters on the actual native console, considering you can use a DualSense controller on a PS5, that's the controller it's meant to be used on that console. Why would you run it through this adapter? Well, because input lag free, you would get that turbo functionality as well as remapping. Two features I personally don't use, and I strongly advise you don't use turbo and competitive multiplayer because that makes you a sleazeball, but maybe a very grindy, repetitive task, farming for resources in a game or something like that. You can just hold down a button and have it spammed repeatedly as opposed to you sitting there getting early onset arthritis. And now, lo and behold, in this topsy-turvy world, I am controlling my PlayStation 5 with an Xbox Elite controller. That's just craziness. Now, this is fully functional when playing PS4 games. Cross becomes A, circle becomes B, so on and so forth. Everything is just mapped as it should. However, if you try and launch a PS5 game, you're of course going to get that error pop up saying, hey, use a DualSense controller. You need those specific features like the haptic feedback and adaptive triggers. Sony's not really willing to let go of that restriction just yet. They're very taut on requiring you to use a DualSense controller in order to play PlayStation 5, not just exclusives, but PlayStation 5 games. Now, if you're trying to convert controllers for modern consoles, there's three models that you should be looking at. The XB2, if you're on Xbox. This lime green puppy, just pretend that this XB original doesn't even exist. The NS, if you're on Nintendo Switch, this red version. And the XE2, if you are on PlayStation. Again, I would just skip over the XE original, the XE1. It wasn't called the XE1, you know, just the XE. Now, Brick also does have a bunch of adapters for retro consoles as well. I've showcased a couple for PlayStation 1 and 2, NES, SNES, but they do have a ton ton more. So if you're interested in any kind of controller conversion, I would recommend checking out their website. It is linked in the description below, brookaccessory.com. It's just the bees knees and the mules nips, not having that kind of console or platform restriction. It's 
It's lovely. These are linked in the description below. Drop in the comment section your experience with converters like these, positive, negative experiences. We'll get a little controller conversation going on, and I'll see you stallions and stallionettes tomorrow. Peace. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers. This information will reach in a system as well, which in turn helps me grow this little channel, which I do greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover news in the gaming community and industry, tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing, as well as honest gaming product reviews, keyboards, mice, headsets, controllers, mics, chairs, etc. There are some hefty exclusive discount codes found only in the description of my videos and only for the audience here at Gamer Heaven. I have links to all my other platforms and socials in the description below to get in touch with myself and the stallions and stallionettes of gamer heaven join the community discord and check me out at twitch.tv where i go live every other leap year on a blue moon if it falls into an odd calendar number and my ph balance is on point just kidding starting june i'm going to be live streaming a lot thanks for watching this has been ak40 kevin hosting gamer heaven and i'll see you tomorrow because i upload daily all the time 60 percent of the time sometimes most of the time peace